Welcome to the Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast with Daniel White III. We are glad that you have joined us as Daniel White III motivates us and encourages us to simply just pray for the glory of God. Daniel White III is the national best-selling author of over 20 books. He has spoken in meetings across the United States and in over 25 foreign countries. He is the president of Gospel Light Society and Torch Ministries International. Now, here's your host, Daniel White III. Welcome to another Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast. This is broadcast 326. As always, it is absolutely wonderful and a privilege and an honor to be with you today to encourage you to pray. And I really mean that. I do not take this opportunity and this privilege that God has given to me for granted. Today, by the grace of God, I would like to begin by sharing with you a poem, as I always do. Uh, this is a poem titled, A Prayer for Missions, by my daughter, Daniela White. Christians here the Lord's call, go and harvest while it is day, witness to the lost until darkness fall, pray for the perishing far away. Christians, there is no time to waste, many are lost and left alone in the cold, lead them out of bondage, sin and disgrace. Bring them to safety in the shepherd's fold. Christians, be strong and do not tire. God will give you grace if you pray. We must tell the world of the impending hellfire and pray for the perishing far away. Ladies and gentlemen, Our prayer motivator verse from the Word of God today is 1 Samuel 12, 23 and 24, which reads, Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, but I will teach you the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things he hath done for you. <clears throat> Allow me to share with you some fine points from Matthew Henry's commentary on this verse or these verses. He comforts them by, uh, with rather, an assurance that he would continue his care and concern for them. First Samuel twelve twenty three. They desired him <clears throat> to pray for them. First Samuel twelve nineteen. He might have said, "Go to Saul, the king that you have put in my room." and get him to pray for you. But so far is he from upbraiding them with their disrespect to him that he promised them much more than they asked. Number one, they asked it of him as a favor. He promised it as a duty and startles at the thought of neglecting it. Pray for you, says he, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in not doing it. Note, 
it is a sin against God not to pray for the Israel of God. It is a sin for a preacher not to pray for the church, especially for those of them that are under our charge. And good men are afraid of the guilt of omissions. They asked him to pray for them at this time and upon this occasion. But he promised to continue his prayers for them and to cease as long as he lived. Our rule is to pray without ceasing. We sin if we restrain prayer in general and in particular if we cease praying for the church we sin they asked him only to pray for them but he promised to do more for them not only to pray for them but to teach them though they were not willing to be under his government as a judge he would not therefore deny them his instructions as a prophet, and they might be sure he would teach them no other than the good and the right way. And the right way is certainly the good way. The way of duty is the way of pleasure and profit. Ladies and gentlemen, my personal encouragement today is that if there ever was a time to pray in the history of our world, that time is now. We need to pray. We ought to pray. It is best for us to pray. This is indeed a praying time. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. I guarantee you that many of you on some occasion in your Christian walk have felt like fainting. You felt like giving up. But God does not want us to give up. He wants us to continue to pray. Our prayer motivator quote today is from Derek Prime and Alistair Begg. He said, prayer is our principal and main work. It has priority over the ministry of the word in that it must come first. It is by prayer that the sword of the spirit, the word of God is effectively unsheathed. Our prayer motivator devotional today is part six of our series titled Why Fasting and Prayer is Important. Why Fasting and Prayer is Important. Part six from that Prince of Prayer, Dr. John R. Rice, and his book, Prayer, Asking and Receiving. Ladies and gentlemen, Fasting, he goes on to say, means persistence in prayer. Please listen carefully. This is, this is very powerful. Fasting means persistence in prayer. We may pray often, but most of us do not pray much. Our prayers are transitory, indefinite, and brief. On the other hand, to fast and pray simply means that one settles down to the business of praying with a persistence that will take no denial. The widow who haunted the unjust judge with her persistent pleading to avenge her of her adversary in Luke 18.3 probably, probably neglected her housework while she did it and possibly did not eat. I suppose even the unjust judge did not get to enjoy his food or his rest either. Why so steadily did she pursue him with her urgent pleas? Real 
persistence in prayer, letting other things go, and giving God the right of way often involves fasting. In fact, I think there is little point to fasting and depriving ourselves of other things simply as a matter of self-punishment if we do not pray. If a man is to be just as absorbed in business as ever with no more thought for God, then what good would it do him spiritually to do without food or drink or sleep? Fasting is the partner, if you will, a accompaniment of persistent, fervent prayer that will not be denied. <clears throat> Now, friend, it is time for us to pray. Please remember the announcer will provide the information for you to send in your prayer request at the end of this broadcast. Holy Father God, teach us to fast and to pray. Grant us your grace, your strength, your anointing, and the power of your Holy Spirit to fast and to pray the way that you would have us to. And Holy Father God, have mercy and grace upon us as we individually confess our wicked, evil, and ungodly sins of pride, of stubbornness, of disobedience, of rebelliousness, Lord, of all unrighteousness, all uncleanness of thought, word, and deed. Lord, for Jesus Christ's sake, even as your people, Forgive us of our sins. Crucify, Lord, our flesh, and fill us afresh and anew with the fullness and the power of your Holy Spirit. Revive us again, restore us again, and renew us again. Lord, we pray for the salvation of over three million people. Lord, we pray for the healing of this nation. We pray, Lord, for the revival of your church. We pray, Lord, for all pastors, church leaders, and missionaries around the world who stand for you. And Lord, lead them, guide them, and direct them in the path that you would have them to go. Rebuke and bind the devil and his demons and his host from your servants and from your people deacons and Sunday school teachers, <clears throat> people who drive the vans. Lord, we pray also that you would save and give leadership and wisdom to the president and to all governmental officials who run this country as well as all other countries around the world. Now, Lord, we pray for three people who have sent in prayer requests uh, to our ministry here at Gospel Light Society. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for Markeisha in Virginia. Forgive her sins and give her the strength to get over a bad relationship that she was in. Lord, we pray for Eduardo in Lamas, Peru. Help his family to accept your salvation. Gladith, Kay, Brian, Metis, and Eduardo. Lord, we pray for Michelle in Nairobi, Kenya. Help her to get a job, heal her nephew and grandmother. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the following three people who have recently trusted you as Savior. We pray that you would strengthen them in the faith. Please rebuke and bind the devil and his demons and his host. Lord, from them. <clears throat> And Lord, I do pray that you'll help them to find a good Bible-believing church as well. We pray for Nellie and Laura, Venezuela, Sarah in Colombia, and uh, Ed in Peru. 
Now, Lord, we also pray for the following people who have been saved for a while, but who have recommitted their lives to you, who have rededicated their lives to you. We pray for Debbie in St. Charles, Missouri, Harriet, as well, Augusto in Columbia. Strengthen these in the faith, and Lord, grant them your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit to keep their commitments to you. We pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior today, your first prayer needs to be what we call uh, the sinner's prayer. Why? Because we are all sinners. Uh, we have all broken God's laws. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And because of our sin, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Now you have sinned and I have sinned. In fact, I am the chief of sinner, sinners. I'm the chief sinner, if you will. The good news for you and me is that John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you are willing to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, please pray with me this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, I realize that I am a sinner and that I have done some bad things in my life. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life today. Amen. Dear friend, if you prayed that prayer and meant it from your heart, congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, go to GospelLightSociety.com and read what to do after you enter through the door. Until next time, remember, dear friend, pray, think, do. God bless you.